It's Greg Winters of Personal Dog Training. I'm happy to announce this is the first episode of the Personal Dog Training Calls with Clients podcast. This is a podcast that is brief discussions with clients that are calling me that have issues with their dogs. So these are actual clients calling, potential clients, and people that become clients, and the initial calls we have to determine if we're going to work together. It gives insight into exactly what dog parents are wanting from dog trainers. You know, we've had, we're prior owners of, of, of Goldens before. This is our fourth that we've had in 40 years or 35 years. But, um, um, so, you know, she's, as we said, you know, she's three months old. And um, our concern is, what we wanted was we wanted to have her go to puppy classes, right, to kind of orientate herself to other animals and things, but also have some individual training uh, from somebody like yourself uh, and if you do both that's great if, yep. if you have time to do it yeah I do both I mean we want to socialize dogs and you know you know the world's our socialization and I'll show you how to put you through a process where the dog show you how to get them introduced to dogs we have typically have anywhere from two to seven dogs here to introduce your dog once it, it's ready to meet other dogs you know and then help you understand why you want to avoid certain ways of trying to socialize your dog you know um sure. obviously like a lot of people are anti-dog parks for good reason right um because they tend to be kind of chaotic and there's a lot of dog fights you know it's not that it's not that much different in a lot of doggy daycares or other types of socialization attempts that people make so yeah we have a specific process to help you through that um okay. what's the dog's name charlie it's charlie. a female okay and uh, it's funny, my brother, I just came back from that a little vacation. My brother has a four-year-old golden retriever. And uh, right now, for some reason, I have like six active golden retriever clients. So there's a lot of golden retrievers going around. Oh, wow. Well, that's great. Where where'd you go uh, on vacation? Uh, back east. I'm from Philadelphia, oh. and we have a house uh, in Atlantic oh. City area as well. Oh, yeah. I, I, I thought you were going to say... Uh, back east or in Boston or something. I was hoping Boston because that's where we're from. But close enough. <laughs> once we're all yeah, yeah. once we're all out west, we're all the same. Close enough. Yeah, right? so that's so true. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, so it sounds like you know we want to teach your dog how like you know to not pull, pull on the leash, to, to how to relax on command. You know, uh, some of the things that I teach, especially most of my business is referral based, so the people okay. already understand the kind of work I do because. I don't teach like sit, stay, come and down, really, and I don't do the whole food luring, positive reinforcement stuff, um, because I found that when we're trying to raise a dog, I've raised hundreds of puppies successfully, um, that those are very limited with their ability to help with social development and behavior. So unfortunately, we have to teach them other things, like how to have that really good structured walk, how to play the, with the toy the right way, um, you know, how, and then we can start to use those tools to introduce them to other dogs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So sure. put you through a kind of a process of raising a dog instead of thinking that what I, again, refer to as traditional dog training is going to help with behavior and social development, you know? Yeah. So that's why, obviously, personal dog training is we, we focus on behavior-related uh, communication methodology, you know? Sure. So, yeah. So what is your approach to that? Well, one of the things we you always talk about is kind of what we just mentioned is like I give a lot of discussions to children's kids camps and they understand that they have to learn more than sit, stay, coming down for their total social development. And the food learn being bribed to do things only gets such a good response. And then, the, the, right, so that's why I, I had to develop a thing called communication commands that you can find a good amount of information on because I've, you know, it's online on my website, but... Um, their behavior and social development direct methodologies for teaching a dog. So, um, and one of the things we have to teach any dog, like for instance, when you're walking your dog, what type of equipment are you using with the leash? Well, she's not really quite walking on a leash yet. She okay. still bites, it, kind of fights it. But okay. I, I, yeah. So. Well, you know, just to give you an. Even in the course of talking to somebody like you, you know, at points I want to educate you about what I do and what we need to do to help any dog and their owners is that you got to, you know, people will put like a harness on a dog lots of times. It's one of the most common pieces of equipment, but they don't have any correction ability and they can't get any high level uh, walking skills, which means they're going to be falling behind in social development. 
And then, so we do have to use something around the neck, but the traditional like choke chain or flat buckle collar will hurt a dog because it'll keep pulling, right? So we do use collars that allow for a correction, but they're a plastic version of those prong collars, okay? And they, okay. Go, on, they go on loose, right? And they allow for an even correction. So when you do have to correct, you just do it like we all did as kids, but it actually works because you have the right equipment on it. It turns out it's super safe, right? That's, yeah. what, that's why my biggest individual referral source in the Valley here is actually veterinarians, the smart ones that understand this as well. And then the harness, they can slip out of harnesses. That's in, in the choke chain and the flat buckle collar again, causing damage. Why the heck would you want to put your dog on something like that? We get to a verbal no or a stop or because we're willing to go physical the right way, right? And then yes. we get to like a high 90 percentage. And remember, correction isn't everything. It's just a starting point, you know? If your dog's overexcited, we've got to teach it how to relax. So again, tr traditional dog training doesn't have relaxation techniques. So I have direct relaxation techniques for you guys, you know? That we can okay. Teach. So hopefully that makes some sense. Yeah, no, you know it does. And, and so let me ask you a question about vaccinations. Our, sure. our vet said, said that... Um, that he feels that it's more important to get her into training um, with other puppies than to have her completely vaccinated because other puppies are going to be in the same kind of thing as her, you know. Uh, but not to get not, not to walk her with dogs up until she's done with her four shots. Yeah, I mean, I this is where I I defer to your vet unless what I hear you saying is so crazy, and I've heard something else from a, a vet I trust more, you know. Uh, okay. So I, you know, what he's saying is not at odds with what we could need to do. It sounds like, uh huh. Right. So I would want your dog to learn a couple things before it comes to meet the other dog. So we're not, you know, I'll show you a few things, then you come over and see how your dog interacts, and then we'll show you how to start making the adjustments for good socialization. We'll do that together. No. You know, here in a, I'm, I don't train out of a facility. I, if you see all my stuff, I train in a home. So you'll come to a home that looks like a like a home where there just happens to be other dogs your dog's going to socialize with, just like in the real world, you know. And yeah. your dog will get to make the right kinds of mistakes. My, you know, I don't, we correct dogs. Dogs don't correct each other, right? So if your dog makes mistakes, I'll stop your dog, you know. If it's over-touching a dog, we'll correct and say, hey, listen, your dog's going to over-touch a bunch of other dogs if we don't work on this. It's going to get too physical. Or your dog's, maybe it's too shy. And if you bring it around dogs that jump all over it, you know, you could end up with a dog that has leash reactivity because all it thinks is it's all excitement all the time, you know? Yeah. So there are a lot of the things that we kind of will work on together, teach you how to expose your dog to the world properly and then introduce it to things in a way that's going to help with the long-term behavior and social development. Okay, and where are you located? I'm located in North Phoenix, and I cover the uh, Scottsdale, Phoenix, and Paradise Valley areas predominantly. Okay, and would you be coming to our home? Yes, initial session I'd be coming to you guys. Uh, the first probably two or three sessions of you guys, and then we start doing field trips where we go and make sure the work that we're doing works out in the real world. We go walk past a cafe or buy it. We don't go in the dog parks, but we'll go to a dog park and walk past all the dogs coming in and out, right? And then we'll come over here to my house for the big dog socialization groups. Okay, and, and so the, the question of, so what, what I've got her, she's sitting and then she's also laying down, you know, when I share, kind of. Uh, we, yeah. I, I put her on a leash, a leash at seven weeks and she ran, she was okay with it, but as soon as she got older and knew it was on, she has a problem with it. Um, and then the other thing would be, she, you know, I have a, a huge backyard, which you'll probably see, and um, she eats uh, these, these, these rocks, you know, and I'm afraid of yes. her ingesting those. So do you correct that stuff as well yeah absolutely and well it's correct but we got to work through it as well your dog is doing it i consider it a basic social development issue you need to use the tool of the leash and the dog is fighting you up like you know countering your ability to even utilize it so we got to get you like be able to use that tool to then help the dog not eat the rocks because access the leash it represents an access point to the dog so without access to the dog, you're not going to be able to even begin to adjust the behaviors. 
Yeah, that's true because now I'm just when she picks one up, I, I try not to chase her, but yeah. I'm so afraid she's going to swallow it. I kind of you know lure her with treats and I all mean, that stuff. A dog like this, I put him on a long, and I got to see your yard. If you have one of these crazy yards that you know the dog can get caught in all kinds of dangerous stuff, it, it's going to be dangerous having them drag around a longer leash as well. You know, but we got to get that leash on and correct them out of going for it. But that's yeah, that's initial stuff like. That's what I talk about, like a dog that won't follow neck pressure, you know, like the leash won't even follow, the collar locks up. That's a social development issue that we got better work through, you know, before it gets yeah. more and more ingrained. And that's actually, believe it or not, the directional unfreezing is taught with the choke chain. It sounds insane because it's directional, but then as soon as the dog learns to follow neck pressure, you go to that even collar because you wouldn't want to correct over and over with a directional pressure collar. But if a dog, like a puppy or any dog, say a scared dog, was locking up, use kind of pressure and a release kind of methodology to get them just kind of follow the leash, you know? So yeah. and that can happen with puppies, too. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, I lose like one in four new puppy clients because I meet a dog that's just locking up on the leash. And uh, I try to explain, hey, we're going to have to get some neck pressure involved. And the food luring's only going to get us so far, you know? So I don't know if that makes any sense to you at all either, you know. Well, we you know if you know, so if we get together on this, you know, I would trust. Uh, you know, we watched a video that you were being interviewed on uh, news channel or something. I think that was you, and uh, as a matter of fact, it was. And so, uh, no, I, I yeah, uh, I think uh, you were on one of those news channels, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you. Yeah, I try yeah. to brag on myself. <laughs> do you have a uh, a training where you take her for a week or so, or anything yes. like that? Yeah, I have that as well. It's an in-home board and train where the dog lives in a home environment. And they're only really, they're kenneled when I'm out or if I can't supervise them, especially if they're in training. But they live like a normal dog in a home. And, and they learn and we see what their issues are. We take them outside for field trips. They go on their daily walks. And they're always living with two or more dogs and learning how to interact with them optimally. So, yeah. And that, so... I do an initial session. The first hour is one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Okay. And then after that initial hour, um, I'll put you into one of the private training programs. Okay. Okay. The initial three, like the basic program, is just three sessions. Private sessions for three seventy-five. The okay. next level program is five sessions for five fifty. And that's typically where we start to be able to have some field trips, right? We go out into the world or over here for socialization. Yeah. And then the seven-session no-limits program is seven sessions for $700. Um, after that, I have long-timers. Two people just love the process, love hanging out and learning stuff. If that's the case or you just want to do more socialization, even after that, I'll put you into a discounted program of some sort. The board and train programs, you know, we'll... I don't typically do it, but sometimes I'll do a short three or five day one. That's one hundred twenty-five dollars a day, and so is like a weekly board and train. So that would be a thousand fifty. It is one. I think that's one twenty-five uh, a day, or maybe one fifty. Uh, but it's thousand fifty for the week. Okay. Um, uh, that's seven days. Yeah, and it depends on the dog. I like to have them at least a week, and maybe as much as two to three. And then I, the way I work so differently, because I work with so many, some dogs, I deal with a lot of severe behavior dogs that have severe problems. I like them to come in a couple different stints, not necessarily like for long times, so like come for a week or two, then go home, and then come back again and see if they start their behavior's holding, you know? Yeah. And then for, for select clients, I also have some boarding options down the road for select clients based on the strength of the relationship so that we can have good dogs that we've trained help other dogs when they come and stay. Gotcha. You, you know, so uh, just two quick questions. The, um, her age, um, and I've been, you know, Googling and reading, and I can be a two-edged sword, obviously. It really um, is. Yeah. And so um, she's three months now. She's going to get her next shot on Monday. it be her third shot, I believe. So it, it should, is it crucial? I'm just afraid I'm going to miss a window of training with her. I don't want to, you know, give her any bad habits. So, so, well, we can start meeting. It's just you can't, you know, we can wait off on meeting the other dogs. There's things we can start working on right away. And No, you're not going okay. to miss your window, you know. Um, okay. it, you know, the dog, they're always capable of learning. My philosophy, it's never too early and it's never too late, you know. Okay. 
right. So. She's really smart. You know, it, it not you know, obviously, I'm you know, biased towards her or whatever. She probably is. She, she, po- she really is. And- Okay, so right about here, we set up a time to meet. This person actually, like I mentioned earlier, became a client. You see there's a picture of Charlie in the beginning and here, right here. So these are just some of the discussions I have daily with clients or potential clients that are calling me. Give you some insight into what actual dog parents and owners are asking of us as dog trainers and behavior experts. All right, thanks. Signing off with the uh, Personal Dog Training Calls with Clients podcast, episode number one, Greg Winters. Thank you.